Hello, I am Katrick and today I'm making this video for the Construct2 Academy. To start up, we need to set up our project. We are going to make a platform, a quick platform, a game, very basic. So I start by double clicking into the layout view and adding a sprite object. I will resize it. 32 by 32, that is enough. I will add my color palette in black, fill it. This is going to be our ground. I rename it, resize it and just place it on my layout. this is my basic ground so I want it to be solid I will add the behavior solid to it now I need to add a new object it is going to be my hitbox for my character it is a 35 by 39 because of the image I'm going to be using. For now I just fill it, name it player or character rather and add another behavior which is going to be the platform behavior. I will modify the property default control no, because I will want to be able to handle the controls by myself in the code later on. So that's my character. I will also add another sprite, and this time it's going to be my character itself. I will add an image point to it and set it about its hand. That's about it. By holding down the control key and using my mouse wheel I can zoom in and zoom out on the image and be able to better position the image points. This is going to be the origin from where the projectiles are being spawned. So that is my character animation. I will add a behavior to it as well. It's going to be the pin behavior. What this will allow me to do is to place my character Im animation over the character hitbox that has the platform behavior and just pin the animation to it. I ch double check the size is the same for both the collision box and the animation so it's good I add a last object which is going to be my projectile itself I resize to 8 by 8 this is just for the sake of this project though in your project you can determine the size and images as you want I name it projectile and I will add two behaviors to it. I want it to be destroyed when it's outside of the layouts and I want it to have the bullet behavior. I will place by default outside of the layout so on very start of my project this projectile here will be destroyed anyway. A last thing I need to add is an instance variable to my character that I will name direction. It's going to be a number and by default I'll leave it at zero. This will actually contain the angle of motion for the bullet and in construct the angle zero faces right and the angle 180 faces left. So that's going to be the two values I will have to keep in my object. Last thing I need for now is some input method 
I will start with the keyboard. So I insert a keyboard object to my project. From now on, I can handle the keyboard inputs thanks to this plugin. Let's now go into the code. We want to add an event. It's going to be on start of layout. I need to do a few things. First off, I'll position my character animation object and make it so that it is over the character on the image point zero and I also want to pin the character anim object to the character object. This way wherever the character object will be on screen the character anim object will be at the same position and to finally give the impression of being on top and that the animation is the main object I will set the character object to invisible. If I preview, you can see that I just have my character animation and I don't see the character object itself. Now I'm pressing my keys, it's not working for now, so that's the next step to handle. I will add another event and this time it's the keyboard. When key is down, and I'm going to start with the right key, the right arrow key. I will want my character to go on the right. I will want the character direction to be zero. And I will want, finally, the character animation to not be mirrored, so to face right always in Construct 2 when a sprite is facing to the right it's at the default angle, it's the default and that's how it's not mirrored. I'm selecting the event, I'm holding down the control key, I'm drag dropping it and it will clone the event so I can just modify the conditions as it stands. Now I'm going to press the left arrow key so that means that the object is going to go on the left side the direction will be 180 and the animation is going to be mirrored finally on key pressed and I'm going to choose the space key I will want to create an object and the object is going to be the projectile it's on the layer 0 for now because I don't have any other layer and as I said I, I want it to be created and the character animation image point the image point we created number 1 and so it's on the X position and uh, on the Y position and another thing we need to do is to set the angle of motion of the projectile to be equal to the character dot direction. And if we test now in our project, I'm facing the right and it's creating projectiles to the right, facing left and creating projectiles to the left. Now let's see how to do about the same with the mouse plugin. So I want to add a new input now. I will add my mouse plugin to the project. And from now on it means that pressing the key down is not going to affect the direction all the animation direction as well. So I will disable those for now. What I will want to do is actually to check out the X position of my character and if it is less than the mouse X position 
it means that the character is facing to the right so I'm taking those actions holding down the control key to drag drop and this will copy them as well I disable toggle disable it's the same code as uh, as previously so it will work now I'm cloning the same event and just modifying it so that character is greater than the X mouse position which means that it's actually facing to the left so the direction is to be 180 and mirrored I will also want to be able to click to create the projectile so I'll make this block an all block and by pressing down the C key on my keyboard I can add another condition that is going to be on click on left click so whenever I'm pressing space on my keyboard or the left button I'm going to create a projectile and the angle of motion is going to be set still depending on the direction and now the direction is set according to where my mouse is pointing so let's see it in action it's facing right my mouse cursor is on the right I'm moving it to the left I'm clicking I'm clicking and I still can move my object with the arrow keys and you see that even though it's going to the left it's still facing towards the mouse cursor same thing for the right and same thing when I'm clicking or pressing space key last thing I want to do and show you very quickly is how to add some fire rates which means I'm going to be holding down my button and it will fire a projectile on a regular basis to do so we go back to our project we need to add a few a few more things first a behavior I'm going to add a timer behavior to my character objects and I'm going to add a few instance variables as well I'm adding one that is named ready to shoot and that is going to be a boolean it's either false or true I'm also adding a cooldown variable that I will set its initial value to 0 0.5 for now that is going to be our fire rate if you will the time it takes between spawning two projectiles and that's about it we will add an action that sets the boolean ready to shoot to true on start of our layout because we want our character to be able to shoot and we are going to modify this event the event that create projectiles I press the B key that creates a blank sub event and I will actually move down my actions to it and add a condition so I'm pressing the C key and I want the character to be ready to shoot we'll also modify that I want the keyboard now it's not just on pressed I want the key to be down so held down same for the mouse button mouse button left is down so whenever I'm holding down the, the space key or the left button of my mouth that the character boolean variable ready to shoot is true so the character is ready to shoot I'm going to create a projectile set its angle of motion according to our direction that doesn't change and I'm also adding there a timer the duration is going to be the character dot cooldown and the name of my timer is going to be ready to shoot you can use the same name as other variables or if you want you can just name it cooldown to shoot and I also need to add an action 
so that my character is set ready to shoot to false. So it has shot and now it's on cooldown. Finally add a last event character on timer and the timer name needs to be the very same as the timer name we set there. Capital letters are critical. Cool down to shoot. This name is not the same as this name. Capital letters really really important. And so on the timer I just want ready to shoot to be set to true. Every 0 0.5 seconds my character is going to shoot. I hold down my mouse button and every half second a projectile is being created. So I do have a fire rate. If you modify there, um, 0 0.15 for example, the lesser the number is going to be, the quicker the fire rate is going to be. So now you can see I'm shooting far more bullets. And finally, if I place it to 1.5, every one second and a half, a new bullet is created. Here you have it, how to make a character shoot right and left and even have some fire rate. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to check out some of the other Construct2 Academy material. Thank you for watching.